The first witness to testify for the prosecution was the man responsible for the Jackson documentary, filmmaker Martin Bashir. It was because of Martin Bashir's documentary that Tom Stedden went forward with this trial. He was the first witness. His documentary was the thing that we saw. Abu, Abu, Abu. I love my children very much. My children sleep with other people all the time. And you're happy with that? Fine with it. It seemed to me that Martin Bashir was trying to paint Michael Jackson as this weird individual that had this propensity to sleep with young boys. When you actually invite children into your bed, you never know what's going to happen. But when you say bed, you're thinking sexual. They make that sexual. It's not sexual. As far as the documentary, he focused a lot on Gavin Arvizo, you know, the holding hands. The jury watched an unedited version of Bashir's documentary, but we can't show you that because the film has since been modified and images of Jackson holding hands with his accuser have been removed. They created an ugly picture of Michael Jackson. They don't want to take responsibility for that. So what do they do? They cut the footage so that no one can point a finger back at them. The prosecution argued that those moments indicated a criminal relationship. I felt like if for sure wanted to portray him as a villain, he succeeded. I was shocked and also disgusted. Being a mom, it placed more of a emotional feeling in me. Tom Snedden was relying on the documentary to be the cornerstone of his case, but Jackson's defense was ready to go after the man behind it. Tom Mesereau was able to reveal that Martin Bashir had been brought up on unfair journalistic practices in England, and Bashir couldn't deny it. Think about it. This guy had a history of being unethical. It proved to me that he wasn't very good at what he did. The prosecution aimed to regain momentum with their single eyewitness, the accuser's younger brother, Star Arviso. His brother claimed to have walked up the staircase where you're in view of the bed and that he saw his brother being molested. The defense contended that Starr's account could not have happened as he claimed, because Jackson had installed an alarm system to prevent anyone from approaching his room without his knowledge. There's two alarms that you go through going up to Michael Jackson's room. And I'm sure if they would have gone off, Michael Jackson would have stopped. Despite the stumble, the prosecution wasn't backing down. They called their next witness, the boy allegedly abused by Jackson, Gavin Arviso. When he took the stand, it was, it was a very sensitive moment because he was a really young kid. And I have three boys. I had to constantly remind myself to stay focused and, and listen and just keep an open mind. Gavin, 15 at the time of the trial, was only 13 at the time of the alleged molestation. When Gavin testified that he was molested by Michael Jackson, in my head I'm thinking, oh my gosh, maybe, you know, this did happen. I felt that he was telling the truth, and it became very apparent that several of the other jurors didn't feel that way at all. I think I believed Gavin Arviso at first, but his body language was like, can we hurry up and get this over with because I want to go eat a sandwich. He didn't seem as distraught as you would think somebody who had been molested would be. I try to remember how sophisticated I was when I was 15 years old, and especially if I had to go into a courtroom and tell them I was molested. I wouldn't be able to give that testimony. 
any kid who has been abused or molested is going to have an off demeanor. It might make them smile or smirk or feel awkward. You want to give a kid that. I do. During the cross-examination, the defense attempted to undermine the accuser by laying out the timeline of events. The documentary featuring Jackson and the accuser aired in February 2003. Later that month, the family was interviewed by authorities. And they all said nothing happened. He was a great guy, their friend. At the time, the accuser denied that anything ever happened. Then he said he was molested for the first time after he spoke to authorities. The change, I believe, was Michael Jackson asking them to leave the ranch. And after they left was when they went to the prosecution. Seeing that the 15-year-old was shrinking under the spotlight, the defense piled on. I looked at Gavin Arvizo and I said to him, you were angry at Michael Jackson, weren't you? And he said, yes. And I said, tell the jury why. And he gave a long litany of reasons why but he omitted to mention child molestation. 